Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the My Golf DNA Labs. I am your instructor, Chris Tyler, and we have got a lot to learn from this now six-time PGA Tour champion, Mr. Tony Finau, who has now accumulated over $35 million in lifetime earnings. So congratulations to Tony. I've always been a giant fan of his golf swing. I've been a giant fan of the way that he handles business on the golf course. I think that there's a lot that we can all learn from when it comes to the way that he hits a golf ball. And it's so funny, I was scouring the internet, trying to find some swings to use for today's analysis. And I can see that there's a lot of people out there that don't necessarily like his golf swing. But when you're number one on the PGA Tour in strokes gained on approaches to the green, I think it's pretty safe to say, call me wrong here on this one, but I think it's pretty safe to say that he's a good ball striker. What we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you three key pieces in his golf swing that allow him to be consistent week in and week out and I want you to be able to use these three pieces yourself so that you can become a better ball striker and so that you can lower your scores and start playing some of your best golf. So let's head into the lab now, let's sit down together, let's take a good long look at these golf swings and focus in on the three key pieces that are gonna help you become a more consistent player yourself. The number one mistake that I hear from most amateur golfers when they're working on things is that they swear up and down that the club or their hands are only back at chest height or hip height and they look at it and it's wrapped around their neck. They cannot believe how long their golf swing is. And one of the things that I love about Tony's golf swing is that he doesn't have a whole lot of unnecessary movement. He keeps things very connected and he moves in the correct sequence on the way down. So looking at things from a face on perspective, what you're going to notice is, is that he pressure shifts onto his right side. There's a very small shift just to get things started. And then he starts turning his body over onto his right hip. Now, if you notice that as his hands are starting to get to right around shoulder height, he is already starting to move back towards his lead side. He's already changing the direction as his hands get to shoulder height. That keeps the golf swing from getting long and out of control. You don't need all of that added movement at the top of the golf swing in order to be able to produce your speed. In fact, Tony produces plenty of speed. So the first thing that I want you to start working on the next time you go out to the driving range is I want you to work on tightening up your golf swing. I want you to work on pressure shifting into this right side and turning your body. But as you feel your hands getting to about shoulder height, I want you to start shifting back over to your lead side. And I want you to make a good fair amount of golf swings before you hit each, every, each and every golf ball. Maybe try to do five or six practice swings where you're doing just that, starting to put some fluidity to it, trying to feel athletic. Don't go out there and try to be really technically minded when you're working through something of this nature. Just remember, if you start thinking really technical and you start thinking about positions and when to make things happen, you're gonna get locked up very quickly and you're gonna find it very hard for you to make a real golf swing. So the first thing we wanna work on is just making sure that when the hands start to get to shoulder height, you wanna start unloading over to your lead side. It may feel as though you're never gonna be able to produce enough speed, but I promise you, you'll be very surprised to see the sort of speed that comes out of your golf swing. Now, the very next thing I want you to work on has to do with what you're gonna do with your hands and your arms in that transitional phase. The second piece is something that I find amateur golfers tend to do wrong right from Jump Street. So if you look at when his lead arm is parallel to the ground, you can see that the club shaft is pretty well vertical to the ground. You will see some amateur golfers stay really wide here because that's what they've been instructed to do or you'll see some amateur golfers even overset their wrists in this position. I like to stay kind of down the middle of the road. I like when the body is turning through this position to have the club shaft in the ballpark of being perpendicular to the ground. And the reason for that is, is that I know that there's still some range of motion that's left in the wrists. If you start oversetting the wrists at this point, then what you're gonna find is, is you're gonna stretch or start the stretch shortening cycle at the wrists and that's gonna make it very hard for you to be able to preserve the one angle that you really need to have in your downswing in order to be able to turn it into speed and consistency and that's your angle for lag. But another, on the other flip side of that, is that if you go back and you stay really wide through this section, and as your hands and arms are getting to the top, I find that most amateur golfers will stand, tend to start really setting their wrists very quickly, and that again forces the wrists to start throwing the club out away from them very quickly, and it's harder for you to be able to preserve angle. So you wanna think of this as a gradual wrist set. Now, if you watch Tony in transition here, when his hands start to get to about shoulder height, and he starts changing the direction, when we look at his lead arm when it's parallel to the ground on the way down, what you're gonna notice is there's a substantial amount more angle here. Okay, so you can see if I were to mark this again with a green line, 
So you can see that there is more angle here now than there was going back. This angle is critical for us to be able to transfer speed. But more importantly, it's what we do with this angle that really determines our ability to be able to be consistent. Now, we're not gonna be talking about the lead wrist position at impact, even though he's got one of the best in the business. We're gonna be talking about what he does from this point of the swing through the point of contact that is something that amateur golfers always miss the boat on. But I wanna show it to you from a down the line perspective first. When you watch Tony, as he starts making his move over to his lead side, the big thing you have to remember in kinematic sequences is that the lower body is gonna go through this really quick acceleration phase and then it's gonna decelerate. And that deceleration is now allowing the upper body to slow down with it. When the upper body slows down with it, now the hands and the arms can work independently from the body and start working through the point of contact. So if you watch, his body stalls out and his arms are working independently and releasing into extension. Now, the key piece, the third and final piece that I want you to work on would be to keep the arms moving through the point of contact. When you look at this from a face-on perspective, he does this really well and I love this video because it showcases how much he keeps his left arm moving through the point of contact. I want you to watch his left arm from here over to here. So keep his left arm moving through that point of contact. Notice how there's space starting to show up here between the torso and the arm where you see most amateur golfers with this pulled back into the body and you see their hands and their wrists really flipped over. This is the reason why he's so consistent. He's not slowing the arms down to make the release happen. Yes, the release is happening at the same time as his arms are moving through that position. And you can see that the wrists are uncocking and the wrists and forearms are rotating over, but he's not stalling the arms out. What is the stalling of the arms that lead to for amateur golfers? Well, it's gonna lead to a really quick, high fluttery ball flight that's gonna be up in the air and not manageable, or it's gonna turn into a club face closure rate that's gonna be much too high to manage, which is gonna turn into a snap hook. So I want you to get out there and work on tightening up your golf swing first. I want you to work on trying to get your golf swing to feel tighter by shifting over to your lead side as your hands start getting to the trail shoulder. On top of that, I want you to work on being mindful of your wrist angle going back. I don't want you to have full set here. I want you, as you start shifting left, to allow the wrists to set just a little bit more. And then you wanna keep that left arm moving through the point of contact so that there's no slowdown. If you do this, then you're gonna find that the rate of closure in the club face is gonna be much easier to manage. You're gonna find that you can keep the club de-lofted and you can hit little scud missiles or little laser beams that don't move off of the target. Gang, so there you have it. Those are the three key pieces to Tony Finau's golf swing that allow him to be very consistent week in and week out. Do me a favor, if you liked today's video, then click the like button below. If you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to post those up. I love answering questions and I love reading comments too. I love to see what you guys have to say about the golf swing. I know we have a lot of inquisitive minds out there. And if you have not done so yet, then please subscribe to our channel. Um, this is gonna allow you to get notifications anytime we put out new content. We are planning on putting out right around three new videos every single week, including the tour analysis. And I think it's a great way for us all to be able to learn at home. Here's to playing better golf. Let's make it a great week and I'll see you in the next video.